One of the most beneficial and important things that we can do in custom car audio, or in any hobby for that matter, is to learn from our mistakes. I have made many mistakes in the past learning how to design, build, and install car audio systems. But I always make a point to reflect on those mistakes and learn a lesson so that I don't make them again. So what are some of the mistakes that I've made in the past on subwoofer box builds? In this video, we're gonna be looking at some of those mistakes and focusing on what I could have done differently. I've made these mistakes so that you guys don't have to let's dive on in and take a look all right my friends so here we are over at the computer and now I can switch over to the screen so that we can walk through each of these pictures together and I can show you guys some of the mistakes that I definitely should have avoided so first off we have this custom subwoofer enclosure that one of my friends at the time and I made together for another one of our friends and as you can see it's a Rockford Fosgate punch series subwoofer I believe it was a p2 possibly a p3 Maybe some of you guys out there can better identify this subwoofer, but it was a 15 inch subwoofer and you can see it's installed in the trunk of a vehicle and this subwoofer enclosure is actually ported. We'll go to this picture here and you can actually see the two different ports on each side. So my friends, this is the first thing that I would have definitely done differently today. What is that thing I would have done differently? Well, as you can see, these ports, they are small. Now, what do I mean by they're small? I mean the cross-sectional area. In other words, if you take the width and multiply it by the height, that area that you get multiplied by two because there's two of them, that is small for this size of enclosure and for it being a 15 inch subwoofer. So how big should these have been? Well, a good rule of thumb is typically for every cubic foot of airspace, you should have about 16 square inches of port cross-sectional area. Here's another picture for you, but I do wanna note that that is just a rule of thumb that 16 square inches per cubic foot it's just a rough rule what's more important to analyze is you want to take into account the amount of power that you're actually applying to the subwoofer if we're only applying 100 200 watts we can get away with a smaller port because the whole reason that we want to control this port cross-sectional area is we want to minimize the likelihood of port air noise there's other reasons of course that we're taking into account the cross-sectional area but the main thing is minimizing the port air velocity so that we don't hear noise if we're using a subwoofer that's much more powerful we need to have more port cross-sectional area and this is one of those reasons that it's really important to use a program like win isd or something else that we can actually look at the air velocity out of the port and we can actually make sure that that is within acceptable guidelines when we're designing the port size now while we're looking at the back side of this install here i do want to note that my friend and i that built the subwoofer enclosure together we did not install this subwoofer enclosure our friend that we gave the box to he actually did all the installation so you know obviously you would want to tidy up this wiring as well I believe that some sort of processor or maybe even the amplifier over here you would definitely want everything secured within the vehicle now if we go back to the front of the subwoofer enclosure there's a couple of things I want to point out here first of all if you look at the transition between the carpet and this blue suede here I remember it's kind of hard to tell in this picture, but we used what's called a piping material in order to cover that transition. This piping material, it was basically a small piece of rope wrapped in black fabric, and we were able to kind of glue it underneath the carpet and then cover that transition from the carpet to the blue suede. It doesn't look horrible in this picture. Honestly, it wasn't a huge deal, but just knowing what I know now, I would do things a little bit more cleanly, and what I would do is I would actually carry this shape all the way up to the top here. Even though it's close to the outside of the subwoofer, I would still have it be, even if it was super thin, I would definitely carry this shape all the way around so that I could completely cover it with carpet. That would then allow me to attach that piece separately to the front of the enclosure. I could use something like magnets or snaps, and then I could completely hide this transition of all of that suede. Now, something else I noticed on the front here, if you look at the subwoofer cutout hole itself, you can see, you know, the suede's a little bit jagged the way it's cut. Not a huge deal because once you, you know, put this subwoofer in, you're obviously not gonna see that, not a big deal. But what I would do differently today is I would use a router rabbiting bit and I would ride the bearing along the inside of that circle and I would allow the rabbiting bit to cut a groove about, you know, three quarters of an inch out to, go around and make a slightly larger circle. The reason I would make that groove is it would give me a perfect step that I could run my razor blade in in order to perfectly trim that suede material in a circular fashion. And it would also 
remove that suede from the wood surface that the subwoofer is actually going to mate up against. And the reason that that is important is I want to use the subwoofer gasket to its full potential. I want to allow it to perfectly seal against a hard, flat surface so that we get perfect seal, we don't have any air leaking, and if you have a fabric material between the wood and the subwoofer itself, you can end up with a little bit of air leakage. Now real quick, before we talk about the next subwoofer box project that I made mistakes on, I do want to take a second to thank show sponsor Audio Control and show you guys the LC2i. So one of the first things that many of us do that brings us into this car audio world is we add a subwoofer to a vehicle. To add a subwoofer, we of course need the subwoofer itself, the subwoofer box, and amplifier, but we also need a way to grab the signal from our factory car audio system and send it to our amplifier and for that we can use the LC2i. The LC2i is an active powered line output converter and since it's powered it allows us to take that signal and keep it as high quality as possible when sending it to our aftermarket amplifier. Additionally a lot of factory systems will actually roll off the bass as you turn up the volume in order to protect the stock speakers but if we're adding an aftermarket subwoofer we don't want to do that anymore. Our subwoofer can handle it. So the LC2i has what's called AccuBase built in. It actually restores that base and keeps it from rolling off so that we keep things sounding good. To learn more about Audio Control's LC2i and why this is a super powerful device for just simply adding a subwoofer to your vehicle, check out the links down in the video description. So there we have it. Let's dive into another subwoofer enclosure here. And guys, I want to remind you again, these are literally some of the first subwoofer enclosures I ever built well over 10 years ago. It might have even been over 15 years ago at this point. But here you can see a subwoofer enclosure. This is an SUV. It's ported, clearly port firing up. These are two 15 inch, I believe they were pile subwoofers. And as you can see in this one, we have a little bit more custom fabrication work going on. We have this custom beauty panel on the front, but as you can see, it's a little sloppy. So these are some really bad pictures. A lot of them aren't even in focus, but here you can see young Mr. Mark Car Audio Fab working on this subwoofer enclosure as trimming some of the materials after it was made. As far as construction goes, I feel like I actually did a decent job for this being one of my first subwoofer enclosures. Something I do notice though is, you know, these are 15 inch subs. They were pretty powerful subwoofers and I only have a single baffle. Something I would probably do differently nowadays is on the baffle where you're removing all of this material for the port and for the subwoofer cutout holes themselves, it's probably a good idea to double up that baffle and have two layers of thickness of wood. Now you could have one for the mounting surface of the subwoofer and the other one could be to allow the subwoofer to sit down flush in, but as long as you're having two layers to kind of add a little bit more strength, that's definitely a good idea. Here's another picture here working on the trimming of the subwoofer enclosure. Now again, only one subwoofer installed at this point, something differently I would definitely do. Again, I would use that rabbiting bit to trim away some of those materials. Now you'll see these light spots right here and what those are are those are where i actually used bolts in order to bolt these beauty panels onto the box now something i definitely should have done differently and it would have been really easy but you guys hindsight it's always 2020 if you look at these beauty panels that i held on with those fasteners i could have very easily secured them from inside the subwoofer enclosure i could have just not had the subwoofers in like it's sitting right here in this picture i could have easily reached inside the box i could have bolted them in from the inside i could have bolted the top ones in from the inside as well and then i wouldn't have had these big obnoxious bolts sticking out but again guys live and learn. Something else you guys have undoubtedly noticed already is all of these wrinkles that are everywhere around where I've wrapped. It's really important when you are wrapping a piece with upholstery vinyl that you, one, really take your time to pull out all of those different wrinkles, and two, it's something that you kind of should have already thought about, but you definitely need to plan for the wrapping of materials. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I should have had gaps on the back side of each of these shapes to a allow that vinyl material to wrap around onto the inside. The other thing is, with these being radius corners, and I mean, they're not super tight radius. It, you know, I could definitely wrap that no problem nowadays. But if you're doing one of your first subwoofer enclosure builds and you're trying to do a beauty panel, something like this, it's a good idea to use a 
chamfer bit. I used a roundover bit in this case, but if you use a chamfer bit where it cuts it off at a perfect 45 degree angle, it makes a nice chamfer on the edge of the board. A lot of times it's a lot easier to take this and actually wrap it with the vinyl. You can just form the material a lot better into those curves. So when you're wrapping, you definitely want to plan ahead and you definitely want to take your time. Now the final thing I want to point out here, Definitely should have painted that port. Not sure why I didn't. I'm sure it was a matter of just being excited working with another friend to get this into his vehicle so that we could start listening to it. We didn't paint the port. You guys, I'm sure you've been there. I'm sure you know how it goes. We definitely should have painted that though. So I've got some other projects that we can go through here. I've got this one right here that was in a Tundra. I also have this build from the past. So I gotta know, if you guys enjoyed this kind of video, if you can help me out and smash that like button, can we get this video to a thousand likes? Let's see if we can make it happen. You guys have absolutely been blowing up the videos lately and I really, really appreciate that. Now wait, don't leave quite yet. Question of the episode, this is important. I wanna hear from you guys. What are some mistakes that you've either made in the past or that you've seen made by others. Let's help each other out. Let me know by posting a comment down below. Are you new here? If so, you can check out some of my other custom subwoofer box build videos, some of the latest here on screen. A special thanks to Audio Control. Check out the LC2i and a thanks to John, Brian, Ali, Nick, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. You can be a part of that team if you want to learn details about how those guys help support the making of these videos. Check it out down below. I could use your help. As always, my friends. Thank you for watching.